Hello and welcome to livealittlehigher.com. Today we begin the, the parasha of Vayetze. And Vayetze means Yaakov left Beersheba and went towards Haran. So as we know, last week um, Esav uh, sells his birthright to Yaakov and um, Yaakov tricks his father Isaac uh, with his mother Rivka and he tricks him making him believe that he's Esav so he will give him the braha, the blessing of the firstborn. After this uh, Rivka tells Isaac that she cannot fathom Jacob staying in the, um, in the land of Haran and finding a wife there. She's scared that he'll find a wife from the shitty girls and like Esav and she tells him to please um, send him away to the house of Laban to the east of her brother's house so, she can fi so he can find a wife. And Isaac uh, accedes. Uh, so here we learn about two incredible women, Leah and Rahel, and they were actually his first cousins. They were the daughters of Laban, Rivka's brother. And um, the, the Torah describes Rahel as, um, as beautiful, that she had beautiful fa facial features and a beautiful complexion. So uh, everything that's in the Torah it has a point. So here we see that she was beautiful. She, she was beautiful inside and outside. She represents the Sadikim who are beautiful uh, inside and outside. And Leah, it de describes her as having weeping eyes, fallen eyes. And Rashi explains that this happened to her because she cried so much. It was uh, known that uh, Leah was going to marry Esav and Rachel was going to marry it, uh, Jacob. But uh, Leah didn't want to marry Esav. He was a very wicked man. And she prayed and prayed and prayed and cried and cried and cried her heart out. So much that her eyes were tender. And, uh, and Rashi says that they were tender. They were like that. They looked like that because she had cried so much to change her fate. And she's considered like the Balshuva, like the person that returns, the returnee, the one that does Teshuvah and goes back to Hashem, goes back to his essence. And, um, and this is something to have into consideration. It's some, a very important point from here we learn that we have um, the power to change our future. The Jew is not bounded by, by the Zodiac. Uh, we don't go by the horoscopes. Uh, there's a certain muscle that runs our life, but we really have the, the ability to change our future. We, we're not bounded by it. That's why when Abraham uh, went out and, and Hashem showed him the stars, he says, um, you're above them, you're above the stars. And um, when a Jew changes his life, when he does Teshuvah, when he returns, he not only changes his future, but he changes his past too. He's able to change everything in his life. And um, I see it in my life, in my own life. Like we were not uh, observant Jews. We grew up very traditional, loving our religion very much and very proud. But we didn't keep the mitzvahs and we didn't know Torah. We, we didn't have that, uh, that gift. And um, when I changed my whole life around, my whole life changed. Like, if I wouldn't have done the things I did and, and returned, maybe I wouldn't be teaching you this class today. I would be somewhere else. So we have the power to change, and this is what uh, Leah gives us. She gives us the power to change. She was destined to be the wife of Asa, and because she prayed so much and she cried so much, Hashem changed her future, changed her, her life. And so what happens is that um, when Jacob meets Rachel at the well, it, he falls in love with her. It's love at first sight. The minute he sees her, he's completely in love. And, um, and he goes to her and he, and he kisses her and he starts to weep. And it says, uh, the Rashi says that he starts weeping because he realizes that he's not going to be buried with her. She's not going to be buried with him. And he starts crying. But he knows that she, she's intended to him. So he goes to Laban and he introduces himself to him. He knows he's the son of Rivka. 
and he says to him, okay, I'll give you my daughter in marriage, but first you have to work seven years for her. He works very hard for Laban, and he's humiliated, and he's uh, taken advantage for seven years, but nevertheless, he works very hard for her. And the day that he's going to be married to her, Laban tricks him and changes the, the bride. It's a story that everybody knows. Uh, Rachel knew that her father was a trickster, and she told um, Isaac that uh, Jacob, sorry, that this could happen. So they uh, made a, a, a word that would be a, a clue uh, when they were going to be married that they knew that they were that she was Rachel. But at last moment, she realizes that the father is changing the bride because Leah was older than Rachel. And in his household, the firstborn was going to be married before the second one. And um, he, he, he tells Rachel, I'm sorry, but uh, your, your sister has to go first. And uh, she does something superhuman. She does something that really, that's why she's Rachel Imenu. That's why she's our Ima. And, uh, and what she does is that she tells the sister the, the clue. So the sister, when she's up in the, in the hoopah and Jacob is asking her for the clue, she won't be humiliated in front of everybody else. So she gives her the clue, and when they're getting married, she tells Yaakov the clue, and he thinks he's marrying Rachel, but in reality, he's, he's getting married to Leah. So the next day, it says, and behold, he wakes up and he looks, and it's not Rachel, it's Leah. And there's a joke that they say that every man wants to marry Rachel and the next day they realize they married Leah. Sorry guys, but that's how it goes. But coming back to the parasha, eh, we see here that um, when he wakes up and he sees her, he's beyond himself. It's like, why did you do this to me? Why did you trick me? And she says, because you tricked Esau, Hashem made me trick you. But what she was saying was not from a bad place, it came from a good place. What she was saying is that when you change your future, when you go and you get a blessing that was intended for somebody else, but your father gave to you, then there comes a whole new set of responsibilities and, and new things that will come into your life that were not intended for you. So Leah was intended for Asaph with the blessing, but since Asaph didn't get the blessing, then she became intended for Yaakov. So both Leah and Ra Rachel were intended for him because Leah represented the, um, the, 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 the future of Asaph and Rachel represented the future of Yaakov. But since Yaakov took the future of Asaph, then Leah became part of his future too. And these two women uh, were intended to be the matriarchs, were intended to be the mothers of the 12 tribes of Israel, of the whole Jewish people, and, um, and, and that's, that's what, uh, what happened. So we see that Leah started having babies right away. She got pregnant many times, and, uh, and, Le and Ra Rachel got very nervous and she realized she was not getting ma uh, pregnant. She was barren, like, her, like Rivka and Sarah. And she decided to do something that her grandmother had done, uh, Sarah. And was that it was that she was going to give uh, Jacob her uh, handsmaid as a concubine so she could start producing babies for him too. Um, and, uh, but they were considered like they were Rachel's. Today it would be considered like a surrogate, surrogate mother, which is something normal today. But in those days it was something very strange. So she gave her, um, she gave her, her handmaid Silpa, and uh, Leah, when she saw that her sister had done that, she decided to give her handmaid Bilha also to Jacob because they realized that they had to produce the, the 12 tribes of Israel. So these four women were really working together in unison to bring the Jewish people to the world. And they understood this. And um, it's very hard for us to understand these concepts today. Um, it's unheard of. 
first of all, two sisters marrying one man, even the Torah forbids it nowadays. Since the Torah was given, it's not allowed if, if the sisters are both alive at the same time. But in those days, they were populating the, the Jewish people. They were starting the, new, the, the Jewish people, and they understood they had to get to work. So Leah had produced uh, four children, and she realized, oh my gosh, like God gave me more than is expected from me. Like if there's four of them, each one would have had three kids. But when she had four, she realized Hashem is giving me more than she's giving the rest of them. And uh, she called this boy Yehuda, which means gratitude, because she realized this was a gift, like it was more than she ever expected in her life, and she named him Yehuda. And um, they were very special sisters. Uh, when, when, um, when Leah was gonna have uh, her seventh kid, she realized that she was having a boy. And she realized that her sister Rachel, if she did have kids, would have less than each of the two concubines. And she would have less than two boys. And she couldn't fathom them. And again, she went into prayer and prayed very hard for Hashem to change the sex of the baby and she was granted her request and she birthed Dina and uh, Rachel birthed Yosef and um, so these two women were really outstanding women they were both very special in their own way each one of them brought something special to the world and um, they, they were one actually they were one divided into and that's what it is and they produced us and thanks to them we're all here today so i want to wish you a good e a good week a blessed week and uh, remember the lessons taught by our imas uh, to never humiliate anybody to always do everything in our hands to make sure that nobody will feel shame in their lives and to always pray for others and for their welfare and i'm sure that hashem will give us back so, live a little higher.